1981, the Illinois defense pummels Pete Gales. It's 10 to nothing. Now it's Tony Eason, play action. This is Oliver Williams. He is off to the races. The final in Champaign that year, 24 to seven. The Illini put a dent in Iowa's bid for its first winning season in 19 years. The only thing I can tell our guys is, hey, just back off a minute and take a look how we got five victories. Who did we defeat in the process, you know? And we're still five and three. We, we can still go on and have a fine season. Two years later, the high-flying Hawkeyes rolled into Champaign on the heels of a big win over Ohio State. They were 4-0, had stars in their eyes. By game's end, the Illini had them seeing other kinds of stars. The defense frustrated Iowa quarterback Chuck Long. Meanwhile, Jack Trudeau and company humbled the Hawkeyes. The final, 33 to nothing in Champaign. It's back to Champaign in 1986, and the Iowa Hawkeyes take a 10 to nothing lead to the halftime after David Hudson's two-yard plunge. They had a chance to up it here. Vlasic to Jim Morrow. He dropped a wide open pass. That opened the door for the Illini. Mankhausen goes deep to Pierce, 54 yards. Illinois came back to win it 20 to 16. Does Fry worry about going back to the scene of so many losses? I th the only thing I can think of is going over there this year, I'm taking a different group of folks. <coughs> that do make a difference, <laughs> especially the ones that got the king size knots on their head last year. Fry refers to last season's 31-7 loss at Kinnick Stadium, a game he and his players have not forgotten. I remember there was a lot of bad mistakes, a lot of, a lot of interceptions I threw, a lot of fumbles, you know. It's kind of the, the same type of feeling I had for the whole year. That game kind of was the, the main thing, you know, the, the, the game that was kind of like every game last year. It was after that loss to Illinois that a disappointed and frustrated Matt Rogers sounded the battle cry for 1990. 